Hi, I'm Steve Greif. I am a trustee with the Coos District Museum. Every year, the Historical Society has awarded awards to uh, people in our area that have done a lot for the society and for the history of the area. And I want to start off today with a very special award called the Mary Banks Granger Maritime History Award. Mary Banks Granger was the daughter of Robert Banks of the famous Cruz and Banks shipbuilding uh, business in North Bend. And Mary preserved so much of that history that we named that award for her. And it's given annually to someone who provides history of the maritime area. And this year, the award is going to Roger Ott. Uh, Roger grew up in the Allegheny area, and his family for several generations worked the river. In fact, uh, worked the boat behind me here called the Welcome. Roger uh, piloted this boat himself as a teenager, and he also uh, worked for a while with the Mellow West Creamery, but, and most of his career has been working with the with Weyerhaeuser in the logging industry. Uh, later in life, he, together with one of his best friends, Lionel Rios, has done many presentations on local maritime history. Uh, Roger worked with my class here in the museum. He spoke to the Coos Bay Public Library audiences. He has given presentations to the OSU Extension Service. And recently, Southwest Oregon Community College Forestry Department did a series of videos about the Elliott Forest. And I know that Roger uh, worked with SWAC and the Forestry Department talking about logging uh, up the Coos River. So it's with great pleasure, I want to welcome uh, Roger Ott. So Roger, come on over here. I'm going to give you this plaque. Tell me how uh, you felt uh, coming out of retirement to speak about the maritime history of this area. When you first called me and asked me to do that, I said, no, I can't do that. So finally I called him Mark and I said, what are you doing to me? <laughs> and he said, why is he doing to me? He's all right. So anyway, we had about three months to prepare and finally, finally uh, we got everything put together and came down here and, and I said, I think I can do it. So we got up here and it went, I thought pretty well. Your, your speech went super well. You, you were so well accepted that people had on for performances um, at the Goose Bay Library and you came back a couple of times here as well. I want to talk a little bit about the boat behind us, the Welcome. Um, this boat was in service on the Coos River for many years. Uh, did your grandfather pilot this as well as your father? Yeah, my granddad and uh, my dad too. I used to be with dad when I was little, about two years old. I would take me out to the place I could sit. And I went every day if mom would let me, of course, that didn't work. So this, this boat was built, as I understand it, in 1919, so it's over a century old. And about 1946, it was, by that time, roads were going up the Coos River and it, it went out of service. And for some time, I believe, the boat was used up on the Elm Bar River, is that correct? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Grandpa made the last run uh, on December 28th, 1948. 1948. And then tied it up and then it had a couple years sat there and uh, then after that grandpa sold it to Juliana and went up there and made it into a total. My granddad lived to be 104 years old and I should have asked him a lot of questions and at the time he was always ready and always ask but you don't and yeah. later think I should have. So that's a mistake I made. How old are you now Roger? 86. 86. Well we want to thank you so much for preserving the photographs and telling the stories about not only the welcome, but all the different boats on the Coos River. It's people like you that have kept the history of this area alive and reminds us of how important it is that we have our history. Well, thanks again for what you and Lionel have done for the history of this area. Well, and congratulations on your award. Thank you, it's pretty nice. All right. Hi, I'm Steve Greif, back again with another award winner from the Coos County Historical Society. We give annual awards every year, and this one is called the Martha Butler Service Award to someone who has provided exceptional service to the Historical Society. 
And I first want to tell you about Martha Butler, for whom the award is named. Martha, in 1999, gave us a very generous donation that helped us kickstart the creation of the current building that we're in. So she provided an amazing service to the organization. This year we have co-winners of this award. And this year, one of our winners of this award is Arlene Roland. Arlene uh, came to the area around 1972 and for the first half of her career after studying at Oregon and Oregon State Universities and receiving her degree, she was an elementary teacher. And then the last half of her career, she was an administrator here in the local Free Space School District. When she retired in 2013, she joined our board. We coerced her into joining us and she immediately put her talents to work as the chair of our education committee. Every year, we invite fourth graders and sometimes we've had fifth graders into our museum for part of a program. And we're standing by the canoe here where we huddle with a lot of the fourth graders and talk about some of our Native American artifacts. So it's with great pleasure that we give this plaque to Arlene Rope. Thank you, Steve. I'm really honored to get this award. Uh, the Martha Butler Service Award. And also, I'm really honored to get this um, co-award with Tony and Brent, who I served with on the board for many years and who I admired greatly. And so this really means a lot to me. It's very heartfelt. Well, you're both very deserving. And I'd, I'd like to ask you maybe what some of your highlights have been as the education chairman. Um, you designed a, a a, a program for our fourth graders. A lot of them stand by this very canoe and, and learn about Native American history. Do you think it's been a valuable program? I absolutely do. And I, I also want to give Sally Crowdy and uh, Kate Sharples and some other people that served before me uh, a lot of credit and a lot of teachers in the area. We coordinated with all the schools and uh, really had a dynamic program. The purpose of a museum is really to educate the community and to educate people who come here about our history uh, by students learning about the history of the area and the Native American population and so forth. They get a strong sense of place and they, so they learn about where they came from, where their families came from, where the artifacts of the community came from. They, they interact with that and it gives them a good basis of knowing kind of who they are, what their home is, and plan, help them plan for the future and plan where they fit into the whole uh, history and the future of the area. So, um, yeah, I think it's very valuable and I'm really proud to have served and part of that. I know the tribes um, have been very involved in this education program, both the Confederated, Akuts, Lorongwa, and Sayusla Indians, and the Coquels. Would you like to say anything about their participation in the program? Well, I'd just like to say that that has become even more robust and um, really have a lot of pride in that they are so involved in the museum now and the programs are continuing to be more integrated all the time and that's, they're really integral to the whole museum and especially to the education department. So I'm very proud of that and that also has a um, We've been integrating with the Senate Bill 13, which uh, demonstrates a need for for people to know about their local Native history. And both tribes have been very involved in that. And uh, it, it's just been beautiful to see that. Well, on behalf of the Board of Directors here at the museum and all the school children in Coos County from far and wide that have come through the museum as part of what you've helped design. Thank you. Congratulations well, again on your you. award. Thank you very much. A co-winner of the Martha Butler Service Award this year is Tony Ann Brend. And unfortunately, Tony Ann has passed away, but we have her son here, Scott Lefevre. And I uh, want to just say that Tony's value to our organization was tremendous, and Scott will tell you a little bit about her value to the tribe. But Tony Ann was a member of the Coquel tribe. Uh, she was a jewel, jewelry maker who contributed a lot to the fundraising events that we had here. 
She served as governance chair on our uh, committees here at the museum. She was also heavily involved in the education program, thought a lot about how to pass on the tribal culture uh, here through the museum, and it was always a pleasant woman to work with on the board. Uh, I have personal experience with that. So I want to give this to um, her son, Scott, and uh, on behalf of the organization, thank you for your family support. So thank you, Steve. Um, it's really an honor to accept this um, on behalf of my mother, uh, Tony Ann Brand. Um, she believed highly in, in the spirit of potlatch uh, regarding the Kokwo Indian tribe. Uh, and what potlatch meant to her was giving and giving above and beyond for my mother. Um, she believed highly in the education and maintaining our culture of our tribe. And I can remember many times um, when she'd be talking about going up to Camp Tanay uh, to, to teach uh, with our you know, uh, younger adults or children uh, up at Camp Tanay. Uh, even when we had our salmon bake celebration, restoration celebration for the Cocoa Indian tribe, she'd make sure to present uh, beading classes or jewelry classes just to bring people from all over our different service areas, tribal members, who maybe haven't seen or understand our culture, bringing them in so they can start making those and start planting that seed as to this is our culture, this is who we were as Kokomo. And the appreciation she had of being able to reinforce the Kokomo as a people, who we were, our culture, through the music. And it was just so, like I said, to me, it was all around a good thing. Uh, and she served for 17 years on tribal council in, in all the different positions. And, um, you know, I, I, I kept asking her down the road, I said, are you done with this yet? Are you, are you done with this yet? You've done this for so long, right? And her answer would always be no, because I still want to serve. I still need to teach. And that was a wonderful thing about it. Your phrase, planting the seed, is so appropriate because she planted a lot of seeds with her work with the tribe but also here at the museum and she was a very gentle soul and we miss her so much and we're so happy to honor your family so thank you again scott and thank you tony Ann. yeah thank you so much appreciate it we have another award that we give annually to uh people who helped the Coos County Historical Society. This award is called the Nathan Douthat Historian Award. It's named after a Southwest Oregon Community College professor, Nathan Douthat, who uh, wrote many local history books here, really the, the seminal history books, we think, uh, of the Coos County South Coast area. Nathan's still living up in Portland and we honored him with, by naming this award. And it goes to someone annually to was made significant efforts to preserve history of the South Coast. And this year we're awarding it to Bert Dunn. Uh, Bert is a Coquille High School graduate uh, who went on to get a degree at Oregon State University. Uh, Bert has a love of local history and in his uh, volunteering with the Springfield Museum where he lives now, he uh, decided that preserving old newspapers for the public to do research in the future would be an important thing. And he raised a lot of money to digitize a number of historic newspapers. Uh, then he also helped co-author a local history book called Images of America Coquille, which uh, many of you know is a book primarily made of photographs with extended captions. And his work with uh, preserving the history of Coquille has been important. And then he has been nice enough to come to the Coos History Museum in Coos Bay and work with some of our photos. He's, he's corrected some of the captions and he's identified some places connected with Coquille. Bert, uh, what does it mean to you that the Coquille newspapers have been preserved? What the newspapers provide, especially if they're pre uh, preserved in digital form, is searchable original material. Uh, I've learned through visiting and working with multiple museums that we are quite rich in artifacts or objects or photos, but we lack um, stories 
to sufficiently explain them. And the newspapers are fantastic for that. So how, what newspapers are digitized now out of Coquille? Is it the Coquille Sentinel? Um, yes, several. Uh, the first paper in Coquille was the Coquille City Herald, which later be got renamed to the uh, Coquille Herald. And then it was, uh, I think, purchased and merged with the Coquille Valley Sentinel. So between those three titles, we have digitized papers from 1883 to 1936, which uh, has brought or made accessible uh, uh, many decades um, of Coquille history that were somewhat in the shadows. And those are searchable, are they not? Uh, yes, with a very powerful search engine uh, via the University of Oregon website. That's what's so amazing, and, and the Coos Bay Times is also now searchable on newspapers.com. What people may not realize is that they can go to their local libraries and put in keywords, and this powerful software will identify where those words appear in any editions. And if you're looking up a person's name, for example, or a place, uh, it, is tr it is truly an amazing feature. Tell me now a little bit about Images of America Coquille. What was it like putting together a book of photos of Coquille with extended captions? Steve, it was a lot of work, a surprising amount of work. There are pictures in a surprising number of locations, abandoned museum, Coquille Museum, Douglas County Museum, um, um, Coos Museum, of course, um, University of Oregon, Oregon State, Oregon Historical Society. So the challenge became um, where best and actually most affordably could we acquire high quality photos. Most of the photos that have been circulated in the past um, have been relatively poor circulation because of technology. But now with improving computers and scanners, there's um, more and more high quality photos out there that uh, uh, beg to be uh, described and shared. Well, Bert, we here at the Coos History Museum certainly appreciate anybody that does any work preserving history of the South Coast. And between what you've done with the newspapers and you and your co-authors with the Coquille History Book, um, you've really made a, a major contribution to the preservation of history. So congratulations on your award and uh, please keep up the good work. And anytime you're coming back to Coos Bay, please stop in and help us with our collection. Would love to, thank you, Steve.